Hey, it's Anthony from carplaylife.com and today we'll be bringing you something a little bit different. So we've been contacted by a company called Unichip. They are a audio solutions company, um, I think based in China. And they've, they've made a new device that they wanted uh, me to check out. It's called the Universal HUD Head-Up Display. Uh, that also works with um, CarPlay. So this is something that you probably don't um, consider uh, for getting CarPlay in the car. Um, this device um, looks odd, and I'll explain a little bit more later on, but basically this little screen here on the back will project a CarPlay display onto this piece of glass in front which will magnify it and um, you'll basically get CarPlay uh, uh, running wirelessly from your phone uh, to this device um, and you don't even have to have CarPlay existing on your uh, in your car so basically if you haven't got CarPlay this can get you CarPlay and it'll also do wireless too and um, I've yet to experience it yet so I don't know 100% um, I think uh, this is still in production or it's just come out of production um, and uh, let's get it installed and see how it works. So uh, everything came in um, this box which I think is generic, I don't think it's anything related to the product itself uh, so maybe that's still in the works. Um, so you've got the actual main business end device here which I'll go over that in a little bit more later on. You get a control unit for your steering wheel, which allows you to interact with the system. And this plug goes around your steering wheel. And um, if you get a OBD2 socket for power of the display unit. So um, they recommend that you use this, which you plug into your car. It will supply power to the USB port. Um, and you plug this end into uh, this little this system here at the back um, uh, So you got this for power, but if you haven't got one in these cars or something that's uh, nearby that you don't want to um, wire it around to uh, They also supply um, this um, AC uh, 12 volt um, Cable with the USB C on the end which again will connect to the actual unit so we will try and use the OBD2 socket today because that's what it's for and it might give you extra functionality. Uh, this device, so it looks um, a little bit odd. Um, you, This piece of glass is basically almost like a reflector uh, which will come from a display that is down here and we'll look at that when it's all up and running in a minute. You've got a on and off switch uh, you've got a USB-A port and I think a hole there for you the reset or it's a microphone port. At this end you've got um, the USB input. So this is pretty much the back of the device. Uh, and a 3.5mm uh, jack by the looks of it for potentially if you want to feed this into audio. Uh, you've got a little um, light there, LED light that probably tells you that it's being powered. And on the front end You've got the branding itself, uh, two little uh, microphone input, I think, or they could be sensors of some sort. Um, some radiator there for that's probably where all the circuitry is sitting. And um, underneath, uh, I think this is like a grip um, uh, tape. So once I peel this off, this will pretty much stick, hopefully, to the dash and it shouldn't slide around the dash when you move about. So uh, I'll peel those off last once I know where I'm going to put it. And uh, that's pretty much it in the box. There's no manual, so I'm going to be winging this, and hopefully it should be pretty straightforward. I'll contact them and find out um, where, if there should have been a manual with this, or uh, what people should be using if um, they buy this product. So let's get it plugged in and um, get it switched on and see how it works. So the OBD2 socket for a VW Mark 7 is just underneath the driver's side glove box. You can see that it has a quite a pink colour to it, you can't really miss it. And then 
we've got the cable running temporarily over here bring that down and we've got this thing poised here for now I don't think if I turn it on it's not gonna come alive so oh wow okay so it's working already so as you can see either this display is uh, if I just do that you can see that's so strange okay so I'm gonna use this dongle thing maybe I should plug it onto the wheel it only go one way and you can't rotate it either so um, okay so I am selecting it so I'm gonna use this to navigate left and right you can see it's flicking through this uh, display and um, let's go to settings so basically this is taking the power from the car and I've not even turned the key yet or turned it on this is taking the, the power directly from the car battery so ideally you want this to turn off automatically um, let's go to startup app link on that so what's going to happen is um, it uses audio um, to send the um, it uses your FM radio to transmit um, audio from this device to your stereo so ideally you'd be listening to music from your phone anyway so not from a radio so you can't necessarily use radio station and carplay at the same time you would have to use just carplay and either play a radio station through a carplay app or um just use spotify or apple music or something so we're gonna have to configure this to work with the radio station it has here so all right so we plug this in here this is our little wheel control i very rarely sort of put my hands down here so i'll put it um you can't really have it on the outside so, I guess you could, but that's going to be awkward. So I'm going to have it on the inside. This runs, um, you've got Bluetooth, Android Auto, CarPlay. So let's try CarPlay. So please connect the phone to Bluetooth. And we're down here, we've got uh, what looks like it here. So we're going to connect to that. Connecting. Right, it's going to give me car HUD ID which I don't know um, you can see that there is the pairing mode is 666 so let's go back to CarPlay right so it's waiting to pair again and there we're gonna on here we're gonna try and pair so 666 and pair so starting up CarPlay. Do I want to use the CarPlay uh, experience? Yes, I do. And now it's going to do all the Bluetooth handoff and pair, probably. This might be really hard to see. Kind of need to maybe try this at night time. But there you go. We're now in CarPlay. Um, so that's not too bad. So you can see, as I come across, it now then sees the display. So unfortunately, there's not going to be a sharing experience by the looks of it. Uh, only you're going to be able to see this. You're, if anyone sits behind you, they might be able to see partially to it, but anyone else won't be able to see um, this display, sadly. Um, again, you can probably tilt it to get a, a different angle. When this is actually sit here properly, uh, you might be able to see it. But surprisingly, in the daylight, and the sun is fully out now, um, that's very clear to see. Um, it feels quite bowed a little bit to see. Um, it's not a one-to-one -one with the display that's around it. So that kind of like gives you a bit of um, uh, a different experience. And again, I can't interact with this. So I need to use this uh, to control it. So I've never really done CarPlay using a switch before, but here we go, we're back to here. Um, you can go to UChip Home, uh, UniChip, sorry. So let's just do that and see where it takes us. 
So back here. Um, again, you've got a home button here. So just by tapping that, it doesn't do anything now. So you've got music. So um, on the side of the device here, you've got a USB-A port. So um, you can plug in a, a, a stick full of MP3s and it'll probably play it from there. Um, but again, we've got CarPlay and let's just um, say go to um, Spotify. It's a lot harder to navigate. Uh, no, don't want that. So let's go back. Oh, this is very awkward. I'd hate to have a car that doesn't have a touch screen. So let's go down. So we're in Spotify now. Um, this is obviously using my Wi-Fi and I'm also running uh, beta 13.5 uh, on this phone. So if there's any niggles, it could be potentially that I'm on the beta. Um, so let's go to playlist anything right now shuffle play right so this is playing obviously we can't hear anything uh, because the stereo isn't um, connected to anything yet if I go back to the menu um, uh, this is just playing normal radio so we'll come out of this so let's go um, out to menu and then basically we need to set this up to transmit audio across the FM transmitter that's built into this so you can see uh, we've got um, FM transmitter option that's on it's currently set to 87.5 so down here we'll go to 87.5 and now we're hearing music so what we need to do now is basically go um, back. Oh, don't want to do that. Okay, we're here again. So we need to come back home, back into CarPlay. And uh, let's go back to Spotify. Well, you can see it playing here. So if I pause it, the pause, music's paused. And then we're playing the next track and it's all coming through here unfortunately no um extra data has been shown here and we can't really interact here and we can't interact with our um uh wheel controls because otherwise you'll just change the station and not what's actually on here so everything to do with this is going to have to be interacted with through this really um unfortunately it's not like uh you kind of want to do an up, down, left, right, and maybe have other options down here. I think that might have been a better way to do it because it feels unintuitive to go left and right, down and up. Um, and I would like to see a, a fast way to get home to the actual main menu. That would have been quite nice. But um, if you haven't got CarPlay in your car, this is not a bad uh, way to go about doing it if you don't mind the controls. I'm very impressed with the um, quality and the brightness of this little display um, and how much it draws through power I'm not sure it's a very small screen um, that's being magnified so there's not a lot of power that's being drawn through the OBD2 socket and the car battery so um, I think I will give this a spin and um, see how this fares in the car drawing motion and um, report back. So we're back in the office uh, after a bit of a run around uh, with the Unichip CarPlay HUD. And um, it's not bad. Um, there are a few niggles that I would change, but overall, like if you haven't got a vehicle that doesn't allow you to uh, install CarPlay into it and you don't want to tackle away an aftermarket install, um, this is not a bad solution.
Um, it's, um, it looks quite lo-fi with the display and what is necessarily a magnifying uh, glass in a way. So issues. Uh, what I found in my vehicle was that the, the, the length of this, which is probably needed to project a decent size uh, in the Golf, uh, this is hitting the windscreen um, uh, quite um, straight away and you don't really, you can't really get it to a, a good enough position to have it either in front of you or um, to, uh, you're pretty much forced to have it to the side of you, unfortunately. Um, and the way the dash is um, set out, it's, it's not a straight level dash and not every dash is made the same. So uh, attaching these um, could be a little bit troublesome. I also think these are adhesive and I think it would have been better to uh, coat this or use the uh, material that you can peel away and put it back on and peel away and put it back. I think this, once you've had it, tried it around a few places, um, the dust in the car, it might lose its adhesion. Um, I can't sort of guarantee that's actually gonna happen. This actually might work better than I, than I think. But um, yeah, it, I would prefer to have that rather than um, just adhesive tabs. So one of the issues I found was the OBD2 socket in that. Power in the system comes from uh, um, the OBD2 directly. So it's not really listening out for your ignition. So when the ignition is off, this is still being powered. So if you leave your car, and I have locked my car uh, to find out by looking through the window that this is staying on. Um, so you have to remember to turn this off. I couldn't see any auto off feature um, which should really should be an implemented uh, for this functionality to be remotely um, functional in the car really. Not everyone's going to remember to turn that off so this should have a fail safe and turn off after a certain amount of time and I'll confirm that with the, with the, um, the makers of this and see if that's actually the case or not. I think without the manual I couldn't really see if that was had the ability but from the menu I couldn't see any ability to have it auto turn off after a certain amount of use. Um, so uh, the top here also runs quite hot, but you're not really going to touch that. Um, and um, I didn't try the USB audio, but I'm pretty sure you'll use a built-in player for that. And uh, you can also Bluetooth to it as well and um, uh, Bluetooth audio to this instead of using CarPlay. So there's an option there. And you also have Android Auto as a, an option if you've got an Android device. Um, again, uh, with this attached, and it's actually got a firm pivot point um, there, and you can actually rotate this once it's actually stuck down, um, this tends to wobble uh, when you're driving. Um, I don't think you're ever gonna fix that unless you attach something more firm to the display. And I think, I don't think that's even gonna be possible uh, with anyone trying to make something similar to this. Um, this is always gonna wobble in some respects. Something you don't really get when you've got a, uh, a receiver unit. Um, so it's a bit awkward to see CarPlay wobble in, in, in that kind of way. So um, I think uh, a more fixed solution, if you don't like that, uh, is gonna to have to be a head unit. Or if they could bundle this into a an eight or nine even 10 inch display that you just mount on the car and do away with all this that actually would be a decent product um and it would use wife uh wireless car play and still use the fm transmitter but you do it through an actual physical uh big large screen display high resolution as well that'd be a, that'd be a must on as well I think that could be an actually decent product that um, that could uh, surpass something like this and allow people without experience or the ability to put CarPlay in their vehicles, um, this display, that'd be, that'd be quite a nice touch. Um, I didn't try the uh, this cable, uh, but it's just sending power. So I'm sure that this would work generally anyway. I didn't need to use the 3.5 jack I uh, just use the trans um, transmitting of the FM, and um, if you do have an aux in, 
that might be an option to bypass the radio completely. So you could in theory use, no, you would still have to have aux in um, input to allow you to listen out for audio through this device. So it, you are limited to um, listening purely through CarPlay or Android Auto and um, not being able to do a combination of um, radio and CarPlay. That's not an option really with this. You'd have to use a, a, a radio app with CarPlay to listen to radio and still use this at the same time, audibly at least. You can obviously still use this visually, but if you're getting directions, you need uh, the audio to come through your car system and um, it won't come through the phone. Um, so overall, impressions are good. It really depends on what you're limited to in the car, um, your technical knowledge and your know-how and whether you do want to have a more simple uh, way of getting CarPlay in your non-CarPlay car. So um, it really depends on your situation, really. If you can afford to get an aftermarket system or upgrade your um, existing uh, car with an OEM uh, CarPlay system, I would definitely go that route. But for, I think, $199, um, this is not a bad product to get CarPlay in your car without the headache, basically. So um, look out for our review on carplaylife.com and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, bye.